Uh, thanks, Pratisha. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Ravi Raj Matme. I'm a senior product manager in the machine learning group at ARM. And today I'm going to be talking about the Ethos N78 Neural Processing Unit or NPU and how it can be used to deploy machine learning inference on the edge for industry 4.0 applications. Machine learning is, is really going to transform everything in life and industrial applications are no exception. Uh, we expect the technological advancements bought by machine learning or enabled by machine learning to significantly transform existing processes uh, and use cases in industries, right? And these uh, use cases could be things like visual inspection, where you can identify and pinpoint uh, defects on your manufacturing line in real time using things like object detection and image classification or it could be for things like robotics where you have pick and place robots or navigation robots. You can enable them uh, to perceive things, uh, to navigate and respond uh, more autonomously in, in real time. Uh, many industrial machines generate a lot of data and that data has to be filtered, it has to be processed, it has to be analyzed. And today, many of many of that, those things happen probably in one central location. Uh, but with edge gateways and with machine learning on those edge gateways, you can do all of that localized for a much secure, much faster real time decision making as well. And machine learning is great for video analysis as well. Uh, so it can enable you to do a real time analysis of your uh, video streams. Uh, to identify any anomalies, any hotspots, etc., uh, in your industrial setting. So let's take a look at a typical software deployment stack for edge machine learning inference. So um, at the top, you have your applications, which are written by your software developers. And to deploy machine learning, uh, you need to use one or more of neural networks. And these neural networks are typically developed by data scientists. So you may have either an in-house data scientist or you might be working with some third party network providers or you might be using some open source networks, right? But you need to use uh, some type of neural network to deploy machine learning in your application. And the next thing you need is to use some sort of a, a deployment framework. Uh, most Common ones uh, used today are TensorFlow and PyTorch. These are open source uh, frameworks uh, publicly available on GitHub. Uh, and we see many of customers using one of these, either TensorFlow or, or PyTorch. And now we come to you know, some of the lower level software required. Uh, so typically you would use uh, some sort of a machine learning compiler, uh, for example, like uh, the TVM compiler. Uh, TVM is an open source uh, project uh, originally from the University of Washington, uh, but now it's been backed by uh, many organizations, uh, including ARM. Uh, we are very actively involved in the TVM project. Uh, or you might be using something like a, uh, an online graph optimizing engine uh, like ARMNN uh, that we provide. And we see customers typically using some sort of a operating system like Linux or RTOS, and in very few cases, uh, even customers thinking of using Android, but mostly it's Linux and RTOS for industrial application. And then you have your low level drivers and your hardware platform, right? Which typically come from your IP vendors. So that is the full sort of deployment stack that you need to deploy machine learning on your edge inferencing. Uh, in this presentation, I am not gonna talk about training because training still happens mostly on the cloud in an offline manner. And that's a whole different paradigm. So for the purpose of this presentation, I'm only gonna be focusing on edge machine learning inference. So what most people don't realize is that machine learning or deploying machine learning is really a two-sided platform, right? Machine learning is uh, not just about software uh, or just about hardware. But it's a it's a very fine example of a core design problem, because uh, machine learning software benefits from having a hard a good scalable hardware platform, and a, a good scalable hardware platform allows you to de uh, develop more and more complex machine learning networks that can help you to do more useful things. Right. So 
uh, what happens is people, depending on their background and their context, they only look at the problem from one angle. But in reality, machine learning is a very great example of you know a hardware software core deployment. Right? Like uh, we've seen cases where if you uh, develop a hardware aware neural network, you get exponentially better performance. So it's it's very very important that any machine learning network on software you you develop has a view of the hardware platform uh, that you're going to actually deploy on. And this is especially important for edge inferencing, right? Where compute and memory and other resources are, are limited. And which is why at ARM, we have this very scalable platform uh, consisting of the Cortex-A NPU and the Ethos N78 NPU. Um, so you know, the same software stack can scale across different hardware configurations to give you a seamless scalable solution. So ARM uh, delivers a full software stack for deploying ML on the edge. Uh, we work very extensively with our various ecosystem partners to help you, you know, develop and deploy uh, machine learning. Uh, we're working very closely with the framework providers as well. Uh, we have support for uh, all popular common operating systems. And then we as IP providers, uh, we provide all the low level or middle level software uh, that you need that runs on our um, our portfolio of hardware platforms, whether it's a Cortex M CPU, Cortex A CPU, your our Mali GPUs, or our Ethos U or N uh, neural processing units or NPUs as well. Right, and uh, not only do we provide uh, software and hardware to deploy it, we also provide some of the tools that you may be need needing uh, to you know to. Uh, evaluate the models to condition the models so that they run better and then simulate or, and then debug the actual deployment. So we provide the, all the, uh, all the uh, toolkits that you need to deploy machine learning in your application. So switching gears and talking a little bit more about the Ethos N78 NPU, uh, it's our second generation NPU that's seen great success. Uh, and because it's designed primarily for uh, edge inferencing, uh, it supports int 8 and int 16 uh, operations. Uh, weights are int 8, whereas activations can be int 8 or int 16. Uh, and because machine learning is still a very uh, new field where new discoveries and new inventions are being made on pretty much every single day or week, uh, it has a software upgradable architecture where we can add support for new operators uh, you know as and when they're invented by updating our, our driver stack so as i said earlier it's a very scalable uh, uh, architecture it can scale from one to ten tops and it can support over 100 unique configurations and the reason for having this uh, configurability is because uh, no two machine learning networks or two use cases uh, are the same uh, depending on what you're trying to do, some machine learning networks could be compute limited, some could be bandwidth limited, some may have some complex vector operations. So you need to configure the NPU to support what you want to run, right? We, ca uh, we cannot tell you this is just the same constant hardware and your network has to run on this. We give you a platform that you can configure to your uh, content, to your heart's content so that you get the optimum performance from it. So talking of configurability, uh, we provide three primary knobs uh, to our users. Uh, the first is the number of tops in the design. Um, and by configuring the number of max and the clock speed, you can go all the way from one tops to 10 tops, all right? Um, and then we give you the option to configure the amount of SRAM on chip as well, or inside the NPU. Uh, and what that allows you is to trade off your uh, system SRAM or area versus DRAM bandwidth. Some applications uh, are very cost limited, so they can only afford uh, either a small amount of DRAM or a very or allocate very little DRAM bandwidth to the NPU. And by having this SRAM configuration uh, configurability, rather, uh, you are able to trade off your SRAM versus DRAM bandwidth to make the network work um, in your system as well. And as I said. Uh, some uh, neural networks can have be vector limited as well because there's some very uh, complex vector operations which need to be run as well. 
So depending on your network, you can configure the number of vector engines which are uh, designed into the into the NPU. Uh, so using these three configuration knobs, you can have over a hundred unique configurations uh, for your NPU to uh, you know tailor the NPU to to meet your unique uh, requirements. And the Ethos N seventy eight NPU is a general purpose NPU. It can run a diverse variety of networks, uh, things across use cases for whether it's classification, super resolution, object detection, segmentation. Uh, you know, it can run them all. Uh, I have provided examples of few of the most common networks or open source networks, which are typically fall into these buckets uh, that the Ethos N seventy eight can can run uh, very well. And the Ethos N seventy eight because it's a highly scalable platform. It can even run uh, large resolution images uh, natively. So, uh, for example, uh, many open source networks are designed with an image size of say two to four by two to four for mobile net or three hundred by three hundred for SSD mobile net, for example, right? But that may not work for your application. You may want to use a full HD image, uh, in which case uh, you know you will have to modify your network. To you know, accept that input size, and then your NPU or hardware platform has to run it, uh, you know, in real time. So maybe it's 30 frames per second, maybe it's more than 30 frames per second. And the Ethos N70 NPU can allow you to do that. And this slide talks about the scalability of the Ethos N78 platform. Um, uh, we've picked out four sample configurations from small to medium to large to extra large, which is the, really the biggest uh, configuration with the maximum amount of memory. And you can, we've run it uh, for a variety of networks, uh, object detection, uh, image classification, and different resolution sizes. For example, you can see uh, we've plotted Yolo V3 for both 416 by 416 image size, as well as 608 by 608. Um, and you can see the Ethos N78 scales very well in relationship to the area, right? So we provided normalized performance on the X axis, or no, on the left Y axis, and the normalized area on the right Y axis. So you can see that as you sweep from left to right, as you, know, you provide more hardware resources, uh, the NPU can deliver increasingly more performance. And you can see that from the large to extra large, uh, the performance keeps goes up uh, you know, with, with the area and the compute resources available. So switching gears to talk about the uh, N78 in a system context, uh, mm -hmm. the Ethos N78 always works under the control of a host Cortex A CPU. Uh, and all your uh, software runs on the host Cortex A CPU. And when your application wants to run an inference, it invokes the driver and tells it to, you know, pick the pre either the pre-compiled network from a particular location in memory, or tells it to compile the network from a location memory. Uh, the driver will then do that, uh, write the network into system memory, and then program the N78 NPU. The NPU will then take over completely from the host Cortex A CPU uh, to process the network. So your host Cortex A CPU can go back and service other pending tasks. And the N78 will then fetch the network independently through its DMA from the system memory. It will process the uh, network completely end to end, write the results back into the system memory and then interrupt the host Cortex A CPU. So this allows you to offload the network processing completely on to the NPU and your host Cortex A CPU can go back to you know, servicing other tasks. So this gives you a very good uh, uplift in terms of performance efficiency and power efficiency by offloading your machine learning network to the Ethos N78 NPU. So the Ethos, uh, let's take a quick look at the N78 architecture. It has uh, four main blocks. Uh, the network control unit is responsible for uh, the op controlling the operation of the uh, NPU. It is the block which interfaces with the host CPU and controls the operation of the NPU. Uh, you have the data flow and flow control block, uh, which is responsible for reading and writing of data from the system memory and also for uh, moving the data internally uh, within the NPU. And then we come to the two of main operational blocks, which is the Mac compute engine, which as the name suggests is the, uh, uh, the Mac array for your efficient convolution operations. Uh, 
and this is also where we have hardware support for Vinograd uh, to you know make your matrix multiplications much more efficient. And then we have a programmable layer engine, which is actually the the vector engine, right? Uh, and the Mac computation engine and the PLE, the other programmable layer engine, they work very closely to process uh, multiple operations in a single pass through the NPU. And they essentially talk to a local uh, SRAM. So when we say that the NPU has certain amount of SRAM, uh, there is no one big single monolithic block. Every uh, compute engine locally has, has SRAM inside it. So all the data stored, all the weight stored is, is always very local. So that means the uh, data has to travel very little distance physically. And machine learning, getting good performance in machine learning is as much about minimizing data movement as it is about doing the computes more efficiently. And having local SRAM memory allows us to do that. And this slide shows the, uh, the Mac compute engine and the programmable layer engine working in parallel. Uh, so this is a graph of the VGG network uh, being uh, processed. And you can see that, uh, and these, these are the different uh, blocks in operation. So the blue one is the Mac operation. The dark blue is the programmable layer engine or the vector operations. And the yellow and orange are uh, the uh, IO operation, the read and write operations. And you can see that basically all of them work in parallel. So the uh, NPU is a very parallel engine with different uh, uh, blocks working on different parts of the problem. So overall, you get a very high performance throughput. And you can see that uh, we are able to process, say, two operators in parallel. Like you can see convolutions and max pool essentially are processed in one single pass to the compute engine. So they can be fused and you get that much higher throughput. And as I said earlier, uh, getting good performance in machine learning is as much about uh, minimizing data movement as it is about compute operations. And which is why we have a high level of compression built into the NPU uh, to minimize the data that's required to be moved around. Uh, and minimizing data gives you very good bang for the buck because uh, DRAM, any DRAM transaction is six X more expensive than uh, SRAM operation, right? So it, uh, minimizing data that's read or written from the DRAM reduces your system bandwidth requirement, which is cost. It reduces your system power. It gives you, uh, you know, improved performance as well. Um, and which is why we built in uh, compression for both activations as well as weights. We use an in-house developed algorithm. It's a lossless algorithm. So you have no loss of accuracy when using uh, the, the compression uh, that's inbuilt into the NPU. So this slide talks about the uh, weight compression. Uh, so all the weights are stored locally uh, once they're read uh, from the system uh, DRAM. Uh, and we have a hardware weight decoder block which decompresses uh, the weights just in time when they are needed. So what this allows us to do is to use uh, very little SRAM as well uh, and to store the weights, you know, even when they're not required uh, and only decompress them when required. And this is a graph uh, showing the various compression levels achieved. So you can see that uh, we achieve, uh, for most of the layers, we achieve more than 50% compression. So that is 50% less data that we have to read and write uh, from the system uh, memory. And in many SOCs or many systems, uh, there is always uh, contention for DRAM access or there is some traffic on the system bus, uh, which, so which is why there is system latency, right? And we have designed the Ethos N78 NPU uh, to be tolerant to interconnect or system latency. So we have built the design uh, to have about 256 cycles of read latency and 64 cycles of write latency. The reason why we have uh, a higher uh, spec for the read latency is because the NPU performance is more sensitive to read latency. So we focused more on that. We've given almost 4X tolerance to, to read latency. And this graph shows the uh, the performance measurement for different latency, clock latencies for a variety of networks from inception all the way to VG60. And you can see that as per the design up to the up to 256 clock cycles, it's pretty much tolerant uh, to, to any system latency, even the worst case latency of 256 cycles, it performs very well. And after that, uh, it gracefully rolls off. And even in an extreme case where you have uh, almost 
thousand clock cycles of latency, uh, your system performance doesn't get short. It still uh, works to about 40% of its uh, peak performance. So uh, I'll switch now to talking about the software stack. Uh, and almost all software provided by ARM is, is open source. Uh, because we believe that open source software is very critical for the adoption and growth of machine learning. It's a very new field and uh, machine learning is too broad for any one company to do everything, right? And there's so much innovation happening that we are very happy to work with partners and have our partners contribute to the growth of the ARM ecosystem uh, for machine learning. And it allows our partners uh, to take our innovations and add to it and then contribute it to the community. So machine learning as a whole, uh, you know, becomes more, more pervasive. So all our software is available on GitHub. Uh, you know, you can go and download it and use it uh, in your applications. So that also gives you some level of independence of having dependency on ARM to provide all the software for your needs. So let's take a look at the uh, software driver stack architecture. Uh, so the ethos N78 driver stack has three parts. Uh, we have the compiler and the driver, which runs on the host CPU. Um, we have the firmware, which runs on the network control unit. And we have the operator kernel code, which runs on the PLE block, right? The operator kernel code is upgradable uh, and allows us to add support for new operators as they are invented for enabling new use cases. And uh, we release the whole driver stack on a quarterly basis. Uh, with adding uh, support for new operators, uh, with performance optimizations or adding new features. And what this allows us is that it allows that your, dri your driver and hence your system uh, to be performance tuned or upgraded even post silicon, right? Um, and all, as I said earlier, uh, the our software is available uh, under an open source license. It's available on GitHub. Uh, and I've listed some of the open source licenses under which the software is released. Uh, yeah, this slide just uh, verbalizes what I said earlier that uh, we can upgrade the driver stack to add support for new operators, new performance and, and new features. So going a little bit higher on the software stack, uh, we support two flows uh, to deploy machine learning. You can either have an on device interpretation under Android or Linux, and you can do that using ARM NN. Uh, and this sort of allows you to sort of uh, support third parties uh, on your platform. So uh, you don't have to give them all the details about the hardware platform, but your third party, uh, they can use Arminen and then Arminen, using Arminen, you can compile the, your network on device um, and deploy machine learning network. Uh, if you are doing ahead of time compilation where essentially it's a first party uh, uh, scenario where you know what networks you want to run, you know what hardware configuration is, uh, you can do an ahead of time compilation using the TVM compiler to which we're actively contributing. And this typically run, runs under Linux or Android as well. So we support both flows uh, on, on the ethos N78. So this is our TVM uh, flow. Uh, we expect most of industrial uh, partners to use uh, the, the ahead of time compilation flow because it gives them tighter control uh, on what exactly is being deployed to the hardware. It allows them to optimize it a little bit more. Uh, so this is the um, uh, framework to do for the ahead of time compilation. So you have your application at the high level uh, using your machine learning network. You have your framework at the TensorFlow or PyTorch. So you're using Relay or TVM, you will compile your network and then using the low level drivers, you can deploy that network to CPU uh, on the ARM Cortex-A CPU or the Mali GPU or the ethos n78 npu right so we as i said earlier we provide the full software stack for you to deploy uh, on your edge platforms so one important thing i want to talk about is the uh, model conditioning uh, so your uh, networks as uh, after they are being trained you can deploy them as is right uh, but you can you get certain performance uh, but by optimizing the network by pruning it, clustering it, quantization it with retraining, you can pretty much have the same accuracy, but you can reduce the complexity of the network and reduce its size. So what that means is 
um, you get significant uplift in performance. You get reduced memory footprint and bandwidth, right? So you get all the benefits without having to pay too much of a cost to get those benefits. And we are working very collaboratively with uh, you know the TensorFlow model optimization tooling uh, toolkit team to upstream optimizations for ARM hardware into uh, the TensorFlow mod uh, toolkit. And we also provide a tool called the Ethos N Static Performance Analyzer. So it allows our partners to uh, take a TF Lite model uh, and run it and visualize it how it would run on the Ethos N78 hardware. So it gives you detailed insights into the inferences per second, cycle count, your SRAM, DRAM traffic, or your DRAM bandwidth. It allows you to profile the network as uh, you know it would be running on actual silicon and you know optimize the network so that it runs better. And here are some graphs uh, showing you. So this is the one uh, uh, showing the cycle time. Here is your SRAM versus DRAM bandwidth. Here is your read write uh, profile across various layers. Uh, so you can see how exactly each operator on your uh, in the network is behaving on the NPU. So starting to summarize, uh, you know, you can take your uh, high level uh, industry 4.0 use cases, which could be visual inspection, robotics, edge gateways, visual analysis, and you can pretty much map them down to the common uh, machine learning network um, uh, types whether they're classification networks, object detection networks, or segmentation networks. Most high level use cases are composed of uh, a combination of low level use cases. And the Ethos N78 can run all these use cases so it can help you deploy all these um, use cases in your industrial applications. And to summarize, uh, machine learning technology will have a transformative impact to industrial applications. You will see a qualitative improvement in the performance you get, in the efficiency you get, and the results you get. Uh, we have at ARM, we have a full comprehensive stack of hardware and software for you to de deploy your applications uh, you know, using machine learning. Uh, we are working very closely with the open source community to develop a stable, scalable open source software and the Ethos N78 NPU is a highly scalable and efficient piece of hardware IP to you know, run those machine learning networks very efficiently on the edge. With that, I conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time.